Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I want to do a little bit of a discussion about a topic that I have been reading about and just watched a documentary series about, and that is the FDLS religion. <laughs> um, so FDLS is the fundamentalist of the latter, the Church of Latter Day Saints. So it is a branch off of the Mormon religion. <laughs> it is an extremist religion. They believe in polygamy and practice it. They believe in a prophet, which is the one person that is their leader, and that is the only person that has a direct communication with God. So he is responsible for relaying God's messages to the people. Um, and the people have to follow whatever this prophet says because they believe that it is a direct word from God. So there's that. Now I'm going to talk about uh, three books that I have read, and then I will talk about the documentary that I watched on Netflix. So I had three books sitting on my shelves that all have to do with this. They are all written by women who have been a part of this religion and they have escaped from this religion, which is a very important word because if someone uses a word like escape to get away from somebody, that means that they were in a very dangerous place. And that's very evident here. So uh, the first one that I read was Breaking Free. This is by Rachel Jeffs, um, How I Escaped Polygamy, the FDLS Cult, and my father, Warren Jeffs. So Warren Jeffs is the current prophet of the FDLS he is currently also in jail <laughs> for, um, you know, like child rape and yeah, all that stuff. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but she is one of his many daughters. Um, and she left the, um, the group and is living on her own now. So she's talking about her father growing up with him as a father. Um, this one was hard uh, this was, I listened to the audiobook of this and it was narrated by her. The narration wasn't that great. It's pretty robotic, to be honest, but the story is very important and very good. Um, the big thing in here was that her father molested her. And that's supposed to be big no-nos, but you know how all that goes. Um, so that was a big thing in here. And it was just about her growing up under him and what it meant. And then you see her get married and have her own children and, you know, what the decision for her to leave was very hard and how to get her kids out of there with her. And it's a whole thing. So, um, yeah, so this one was really good. Uh, the next one that I read is called Escape. <laughs> this is by Carolyn Jessup. And, um, this one is written by a woman who again escaped and she escaped with her children. And she was married to Meryl Jessup, who was a big leader in the FDLS as well. Um, and this one focused a whole lot on schools, the school system, which is basically their own school system. They pick and choose what is taught. They don't teach very much science because they don't believe in it. Um, a lot of it is, you know, about God and about their teachings and um, how they're supposed to live their lives. Basically, the women are submissive and don't have any rights at all to even speak out for their own um, wishes and desires, and they don't have choices in anything. Uh, this one goes a lot into the marriage process as well, and the prophet is the only person who can arrange your marriage, and your marriages are arranged. They are told who they are going to marry. There are a lot of times where you don't even know who you're marrying until the night before. You've never met this person, but this is who God has chosen for you. And you have to marry that person. And usually it's a person who already has a few wives already, but you're going to marry them too. Um, so she goes a lot also into how the other wives treated each other, which was very toxic. Like, they were not friends. <laughs> this was not one big happy family. They were actually really awful to each other and awful to each other's children. And they were always trying to be the favorite and get favoritism and blah, blah, blah. And they would tear the other people down. It was insane. So, this one. Um, this one I also listened to on audio. And it was narrated 
um, I think by Anna, Anna Marie or Anne Marie, I think. Um, so not narrated by the author, but someone else. So this was a little bit of a better narration because it was done by someone who is a professional audiobook narrator. But um, yeah, so it was really good though. And then this one is The Witness Wore Red. This is by Rebecca Musser. Now, Rebecca was married to Warren Jeff's father, who was the prophet before Warren Jeff's was. And he um, married her. <sighs> Guys, it was so gross. He was like 81, I think, when she married him. And she was like 17. It was insane. And she did not want to marry him. She like when she found out that that was who she was going to marry, she she said like her first reaction was ew, <laughs> like that's not who I want to marry. But so many people, her family included, thought this was such an honor and they were so proud and she's married the prophet and blah, 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 blah. And we're going to get favoritism. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. <laughs> like, um, so she was forced into this marriage to this man and look how many wives he has. These are all his wives. That's Rebecca right there in the picture. But like, he's married to all these women. And can you imagine how many children? Oh my gosh, I can't. Um, so Rebecca was very prominent um, in taking down Warren Jeffs as far as the trial goes um, when he was arrested and stuff. She was a witness and her testimony was very, very important to keep him in behind bars. So um, it goes into that for sure. I, I would say like probably the first half of this book was her being in it. And then um, the second half was more like the trial and um, making sure this man <laughs> is not around anybody because he's terrible. Okay, so these are the three books that I read. Um, this one I listened to as well, and it is narrated by Rebecca. The narration was good. Okay, so the Netflix series that I watched is called Keep Sweet, Pray, and Obey, and it is a four-part series. There are four episodes in it, and it is following <laughs> this whole situation. Um, they have been featured on the news a lot, um, especially around the time of like Warren Jeff's arrest. And they were kind of looking for him when they were realizing exactly what was happening with him. There had been a lot of police um, and journalists kind of nudging on their door a lot just to try to find out more information because there was a lot of like, something is not right here. <laughs> and it was a big struggle with, do we leave them alone? It's their religion. If they want to marry multiple people, who are we to say they can't do that? And Another big part that was, but do these women even want to get married to these people? <laughs> do these women have rights? Are these women being married off against their will? Are they having to have sex against their will? Um, are they actually happy doing this or are they doing it because this is what they have been told? This is how life is and this is how you have to live your life. And how young are these women getting married? That was the big thing. Um, and how much of this is consensual, basically. So there was, there was a lot of like concern about that, a lot of investigations going on. And you could only get as, they could only get as close as they could legally. Um, and then, so there, there had been like, you know, stuff happening kind of just like wanting to infiltrate, but you can't really legally do it correctly. So, um, you know, the authorities were getting really frustrated with that because they really felt like something was off. Now, <laughs> inside, um, everything was off completely. And that really took precedent when Warren Jeffs took over. They, a lot of people were really realizing, like, are we being told the truth? Because the, he taught with fear basically. Um, it was a lot of scare tactics. It was a lot of, as soon as he took over as prophet, a lot of people thought he really just kind of, as soon as his father died, he made sure that he was in the position to take over and that no one would question it. It was one of those things. And just a lot of people started questioning things when he would he would say, God told me that this is going to happen and let's prepare for it. 
and then that thing didn't happen. <laughs> oh, well, that was just him giving us more time now. Um, that was him giving us mercy and blah, blah, blah. We need to do better. People were like, mm. <laughs> and then um, things like, you know, a bunch of girls will wear the color red and all of a sudden God doesn't like the color red. So now we can't wear that anymore. And, you know, these two people are friends. And then all of a sudden, oh, God said, you guys are not supposed to be friends. So let's knock that off. And it was just kind of, it seemed more like whatever Warren Jeffs didn't like, all of a sudden God didn't like as well. And he would just tell him that. And then people were going, wait a second. <laughs> this is real convenient timing here. Mm -hmm. So that's when a lot of people started feeling like they were being controlled here. We're being lied to and we're being controlled, which is really hard for people to deal with because they have many of them like were born into this and that's the only way they've ever lived their lives. And they've spent their lives dedicating to this religion and dedicating to these prophets and believing in them. And then to even suspect that you're being lied to is really, really hard, really hard, especially in a community, um, definitely for the women who don't have any rights and they can't even stand up for themselves or protect themselves because they had their own police, which were all loyal to the prophet and did his bidding. They had their own fire department, which was all loyal to the prophet and did his bidding. Um, so if, and medical doctors were all doing his bidding. So if a woman is being basically raped by her husband, she can't go to the authorities because they're going to tell her you're doing your duty to your husband. That's what you're supposed to be doing. This is not a problem. Go back <laughs> and shut your mouth. Um, so they literally did not have any way to stand up for themselves um, because all the authority figures were loyal and they were handpicked by the prophet for a reason, right? So that's the amount and level of control that he has over these people. It's crazy. Um, so in the Netflix series, Rebecca is actually in there and she does some interviews and talks about um, stuff in the Netflix series as well. So you kind of see... A little bit more of her story and her experience being married to a prophet and what that meant and then how she escaped and um, some other of her family members are in it as well and they talk about that whole time so um, it was just kind of crazy so Warren Jeffs is currently in jail he was arrested I think in 2006 I believe right outside Las Vegas um, and Luckily, they had enough to give a conviction because there was proof that he married a 12-year-old girl. Married a 12-year-old girl. My daughter, Kaylin, is 14. My daughter, Layla, is 11. <sighs> I can't, you guys. Um, I just, my mouth just dropped. I was like, are you actually kidding me in what world would that be okay with God just now just now um so yeah just it it was insane and I'm sitting there watching this and I'm just watching how I want to say brainwashed but not completely I just just how conditioned these people are. And I just, all I want to do is help them <laughs> and get them out and get them to safety. And I know that many of them don't feel like they're in danger, but they really are. You know, they're being lied to. There are people who are still loyal to him, even though he's behind bars, which I don't understand because I feel like the evidence is there and it's laid out for you. And, oh man, but I know that they also don't know any different. And how are you supposed to deal with that? You know what I mean? So it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that this evil, evil man has hurt so many people. Uh, the documentary also included some men who left as well. So that was interesting to get their perspective on it too. Um, so it wasn't just women in the documentary. It was men as well. Um, one of them was Warren Jeff's brother. So that's interesting. Um so you learn a lot more about him, about Warren Jeffs, and about uh, kind of his rise to power within the FDLS. So, man, but um, very interesting. I'm really glad that I read those books and watched that documentary. And I feel like I definitely learned some things. 
And uh, yeah, so it was really good. I hate to say that I enjoyed watching it, but I kind of did like it just from a learning standpoint. Um, but yeah. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Have you read any of these books? Do you plan to now? Um, I definitely recommend all of them. I gave all of them four stars. And have you watched that documentary on the on Netflix? Um, let me know if you watch that and let me know your thoughts. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.